Hey guys, what's up? So I saw this video which says actually, hmm, 10 harsh truths you need to accept to live a happy life. So let's see if I know the harsh truth. But before we start, remember to like, share, hit the subscribe button. And remember, it's not about the left or the right. It's just all about make sense in the middle. Here are 10 life lessons we learned too late. Okay, let's see. Number one. Time doesn't last forever. Have you been working towards a lifelong goal? Mm -hmm. Time is fleeting. As you grow older, you'll gain more wisdom, money, and memories, but you'll also have less time to experience it all. Aligning yourself with what you truly want can help make your time feel more fulfilling. Maybe that would entail some tough sacrifices at the present moment, like stepping out of a toxic relationship or fixing a bad habit. These sacrifices may sting. But you'll eventually grow out of the pain and enter a new, happier era of your life. I've been in such situation before. All I did is I just cut the person out of my life. It's like, I know that certain people want to be very loyal. Like you have to be very loyal to a same job, for example. I've done that. I stayed at a job that I didn't enjoy. Because I thought like I needed to earn their respect. But it's like, I was like... There's nothing I can do to change it. It's like, for example, the Avengers stories, remember? They said that you have a life, and if you make a decision here, you're gonna have like two different lives in a dimension. So one decision creates that thing. And for some reason, when you make a decision, it seems that if you have two lines and they're separated because you change, you're always thinking about what could have happened if I stayed here, and you will fight to go back. I just realized it came to a point that whatever I decided, I realized I'm not going to be happy because your happiness isn't like a random thing. Your happiness is the current moment that you are. You will look for something to justify that you're not happy because even if you have everything you want, you can ask any successful person. It's not getting the price that made them happy. It's the journey. So I have to agree with this right now. For example, I do invest my time in a lot of stuff. I just invest in my kid, my wife, a few friends, because I feel more satisfied because the more people I noticed that I knew that I need to keep investing, investing, the less time I could invest in all of them. And it was worse with them. And there comes a point that was like, nah, man. You, you can all disappear. I can't do this with everybody. Having a lot of friends, I don't think that, that's too much time. <laughs> I learned that very late. Are you subscribed to Psych2Go? According to statistics, only a small percentage of you who watch our videos are actually subscribed. If you enjoy our content and would like to support us, do consider subscribing. This helps YouTube's algorithm in promoting more of our mental health content. Thanks for being here. Number two, you need to take the risk. Do you play what-if situations constantly in your head? As you grow older, you'll start to look back and ponder on your past self's choices. People at an older age will start to reflect on whether they've lived a meaningful life. Mm. Many are at peace with the decisions they've made. But some will feel a sense of despair and look back with feelings of regret, shame, and disappointment. You may fail a couple of times, but ignore that nagging voice in your head and take that risk. Now that I know, would I have taken more risk? Honestly, for me, it's not that I would have taken more risk. I would be more like I have ample enough time to make a calculated decision. It's not that I don't want to risk something because many times when you make a decision, risky or not, you never know what is going to happen in one or 10 years. You, you have no idea. So any decision, safe or bad, is a risk. I've seen the most negative people, suddenly something happened in their life and they click and become the most perfect person because they just had an epiphany. I'm not saying go date bad people. I'm just saying just because you don't take a risk, things cannot get bad. And if you take a risk, it's kind of Gucci, but the person that you are now you have no idea what it will be in 10 or 20 years. People change. You, you're not going to stay the same. You're just going to appreciate things differently. So 
just be a consistent person. So even if things happen around you, it's bad. Maybe if you're consistent, you will at least drag a certain public around you that supports you as a very good partner, as a friend or something else. Because you can make the best decision sometimes and somebody passes away. What you gonna do now? <laughs> you did, you made the risky decision. Now that risky people de died. You can't control somebody get cancer. Three, don't act like someone you're not. Do you put up a fake front in front of others mm. so that you won't feel out of place? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's normal to feel the need to fit in a crowd. It's how our ancestors made sure they didn't get left behind to fend for themselves. Yep. It's a shared human trait. But if you don't stick up for what you believe in, you'll live under a false, masked identity. You may end up as someone that constantly wants to please others at the expense of your own happiness. That's how I got MS. I was always trying to make everybody happy. Even when they did something wrong, I considered it love because it was somebody that paid attention to me. I could not understand that somebody that paid attention to me, even if it was negative, it was just a very, it's like a very strict pattern. You're like, oh, that's just love. They're just trying to help me. It's just they had a different life. You always make a justification for these people. And I don't think it has to be wrong, but I did realize that nobody really loved me for being me and I had to wear a mask to please these people because I didn't have a mom after six years old and I'm not gonna say it was good I was very happy with very little in this situation but there came a point that I started getting tired the older you get um, everybody sees you like a responsible person they want you to help them when you're that consistent, when you're that perfect. Everybody wants your attention. And the fact that you want to keep this mask, you wear the mask so well, everybody knows you. And they're going to depend on you. And you're going to feel guilty when you cannot help them. And I kept doing it, doing it, and I only explained my feelings to my wife. She says, you don't have to do it. You're not obligated. But she says, this is me. But I... I created a persona that justifies that if I don't do this, I'm a bad person. In the long run, the only reason that I really stopped is because one day I didn't warn my son to not play with a specific kid, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to offend the mom of the kid. And then that kid pushed my son in a way and my son broke his tooth, tooth and he started bleeding so much. It was so a shock to me. And that is when my brain exploded. And because I'm so patient and strong mentally, um, when my brain was about to explode and I was supposed to faint, my brain was like, no, we're intact. We're not keep, keep on going. It's like a electricity shut your antenna. And you have to, this method that leads to the ground to remove the electricity so your electric equipment don't explode. Guess what? My brain took the hit and now I got MS. I can do everything I want, but if I get really emotional or stressed, my hand, my body and my legs, something happens and they just don't function anymore. So I actually put a post on my Instagram to all my friends that, hey, I'm going to be me. I'm still me, but I'm going to say no a lot more because this, this way of thinking is killing me. Take care of your body. Do you eat well, sleep well, and regularly exercise? Yes. Remember, you only have one body. Your early years and habits dictate the way your health will transform and grow in the future. True. Do you drink a full glass of water with your meal? Do you run or exercise? How about sleeping a good eight hours every night? Build up your healthy habits now, so mm -hmm. that your future self will be happy that you're still healthy at 70. Yes, this is a short one. I don't have much to say. I'm a very healthy person. But one thing my good friend of mine told me, hey, um, whatever you do now, you will feel in 10 years. And for me, that just makes perfect sense. It might be a joke, but um, you will feel it. You won't feel it maybe in your 20s, but in your 30s, you will start noting some changes. Number five, don't be too tough on yourself. Do you talk negatively about yourself? Yeah. Making mistakes can be distressing at times. 
especially mm. if your mistake has negatively impacted other people. Mm -hmm. You may resort to thinking negatively about yourself during those moments, calling yourself a failure, dumb, or stupid. Yep. But by beating yourself down, you're structuring your mind into one that regards pessimism as your normal mindset. Mm -hmm. A self-defeating mind can decrease your motivation, worsen a sense of helplessness, and even cause depression. Yes, and we used to joke about that I'm a very pessimistic person because I'm just very realistic about the condition. And uh, this is a short one for me, but I remember I saw this video on Instagram that says, Stop saying you're depressed. Start saying you're a person that is depressed. You can't categorize yourself with a label that you're depression. You're a person that's depressed. You're a person that's Christian. You're a person that's atheist. You're a person that's Muslim. You see where I'm going. Everything can change. The moment you label yourself as your identity, you don't give yourself the opportunity to explore. Do you have a hard time opening up even with your friends? People who have good relationships with family, friends, and loved ones not only have fewer health problems as they age, but they feel more fulfilled too. Fostering a positive social life can impact how your life will pan out. Whether you find your circle at school or work, having genuine bonds with people is one of the most important things in life. I had a very bad relationship after my mom passed away. Um, six, I met my stepmom around 11 or something like that. And I just had a very bad relationship in a very long time. Um, I, every decision I made was to impress her or show her that she was wrong about me. You know, it was so bad. There was a time that when I remember when my almost committed suicide, the first thing my head made me think like, good for you. I hope you suffer. And that is the moment I had some clarity. I was like, Hmm, why would I even think that like for the first instance, and then it was like, whoa, where did that feeling come from? It, it can be very damaging. And remember when my father passed away, that was actually like almost a year ago. Um, I told her that I don't want to see you as stepmom anymore. I want to see you or the widow of my father. I want to see you like granny. That's it. I don't care about anything else. I just, I don't want to live in the past. I told her, I love you. Thank you for everything. And she's it was, the most weirdest thing is she's the only woman that hawked me at the right opportunity when I was so down because after my mom, when she passed away at six, she's the only lady that hawked me. And I cried like a baby because my son got really sick when I visited my father in Curacao. And it was so sad that nobody understood me that the change of temperature from Spain, cold, Holland, very cold, and then Curacao, very hot. He had such a fever. And when I landed within three days, my son was in the hospital and I had to stay with him there. And nobody understood. Um, I was like, he's very, he always, his asthma is always. And I just felt so bad because my wife didn't go with me. I traveled with my son when I was alone and I felt so disappointed in myself that I couldn't keep my son healthy because the whole situation that she was the only person that just hugged me she saw it and I didn't want to hug her because I didn't want to seem weak but she's the only person that gave me that hug you know she's the only person that told me when he saw she saw my little son for the first time she told me and now you understand how a person can love a kid so much, right? And when she told me that, I had this vision back and forth of all the things we have experienced that I hated her, that I realized now I understand how you love as much. And I was so angry at you, you know, it's weird. I'm glad we talked it out, but look, I'm 41. I met her when I was 30. So it gives you already a big, yeah, for a very long time, I had some very negative traits in me against her. It, it was really bad. Life throws curveballs. Have you been waiting for something great to happen, only for life to take it away from you? Yep. No matter how ready you initially were, sometimes plans don't always go your way. Factors yep. outside of your control could stop or hinder your plans, and you're just left to react to them. Mm -hmm. During these moments, it can be tempting to stop and give up. But while it may seem difficult to get back up, 
know that it'll be worth it if it's something you truly are passionate about. Yes, that is true. I think I already talked in one of the first point. I mean, come on, look at me. I have one eye. My girlfriend cheated on me. My father passed away. I couldn't even say goodbye. My son is born, the first one with autism, but he's doing great. My second son, my father never saw him. I wanted him to, to see him, but that didn't work. All the flights that I wanted to go visit my father with the baby right at that moment, my son got sick, so we could not take the plane. I had so many curveballs that I said, look, man, you can take the risk, but there comes a point you just have to go with the flow. And people are going to be like, well, it seems like you don't have any feelings. It says, no, it's not that. If I'm rolling from a, a hill and I'm going down and I'm skiing in snow, I can't break randomly because you got stuck. I need to go with it because the fact that I try to stop, that is going to cause more damage. And many times when you kind of stop, the other person is already on its way going down and they're going to be like, hey, why did you stop? Didn't you trust me that they can get up? I'm like, why did you scream to stop then, you dumbo? <laughs> you have to be careful. Material goods don't bring your life joy. Mm. Do you live extravagantly or no. purchase things impulsively? No. Money <laughs> is an important tool, but it can lead many people astray. Mm. If you let it dictate you, you'll focus your efforts on just increasing a number in your bank account while sacrificing the things that make life truly worth it. Mm. Life isn't about a new phone or that luxury bag. If you spend your time chasing after material goods, you'll take time away from the other parts of your life as well. Reflect on what's important to you. Chances are, it's something money can't buy. Hey, before we go to that, I can show you this picture right here. Um, I remember that um, yesterday I had to do some medical stuff and I just went to the doctor. I had to just wait a, like a few hours before I had to go again to the hospital, right? And between that time, I was like, what am I going to do? I need to find a bar. I need to do this. I need to do this. And then so randomly, I thought, wait, I've been so poor when I was a kid. I didn't even have an option to go to a bar. And I looked at the, like a like a weird store, a uh, weird store, uh, with a store, um, like a mini market or something like that. I went inside. They were like had homemade food. I just bought it. Look. I don't need a bar. I can just go there. There was a pork. I just sit there on the floor with these two very delicious meal with a coffee and just look at people walking by and just ate it. Didn't look, even look at my phone. And I was like, it's like when I was poor, this made me so happy. But now that I'm blessed, it's like I forgot how I enjoyed my life. Why? When I'm bored or I'm stuck, I don't know what I have to do. I need to find a bar or I have to be at my home with my phone or whatever. And I was like, you don't need that much to be at peace. It's, it's surprising how happy you could be if you just appreciate breathing some weird invisible thing in your lungs and be like, oh, I'm just glad I'm here. I don't buy clothes at all, but... It's just that, well, I think that has to do because I already believe that everybody can die whenever. So it's kind of easy for me. But I was just surprised that, that I forgot that back in the day, just eating something outside on the street, just chilling, made me super happy. And I just forgot about it just because I was blessed. And if you're blessed, you're supposed to buy stuff or be in a specific place, you know. Don't give up too quickly. Mm. Remember when you started a good habit strong, but failed to follow through after a while. Mm -hmm. You can't achieve something without putting in the effort. Sometimes this effort will last you many hours and weeks before you'll truly see results. This can be daunting for many people, even causing them to stop right as their journey starts to kick off. That is true. You don't have to work all at once to get ahead and succeed in what you set yourself out to be. You just have to do small, consistent steps every Consistency. day. And after some time, you'll see your efforts bear fruit. Yes, consistency is one of the best things. I mean, I already said in the beginning, I have a kid with autism. And I remember when my kid was around three, um, 
they weren't sure if he had autism because he could do a few stuff but the other stuff he had difficulties and then one day they just drop it on me well it's a hundred percent he has autism i said you just told me that yes yeah, sorry mr i we did some research and we confirmed he has that i remember that it was one of the lowest blow after a summer and i decided you know what i'm going to be my son's therapist I'm going to talk to him when he doesn't even respond to me. My son did not say almost anything. I talked, I talked, I talked, I talked. Just talk to him. They're like, he's not responding. I'm like, I don't freaking care. If he's going to copy somebody, at least I'm acting as if he. I'm projecting my way and maybe he will copy something. And you know what they started doing? I started doing the crazy stuff that he does. So he was like, whoa, you're acting like me, Papa. And then he started focusing on me and I meet a lot of people now. I'm in groups and everything. They're like, man, your son went very forward. I guess his autism was a great. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm working every day. The fact that I spend so much time with him instead of going to the bar and drink because I'm disappointed in my genes, like most people do. I just, I always there consistent. And now my son is doing so well that even the teachers are saying, I wish all the parents did like what you are doing. Because they, they don't do that. The, even the teachers like, you know what, you're helping the kids so much. We want your kid to stay at school without a helper because you're doing such a great job. I'm still doing it and I can see the fruit, but you have to give when you're not receiving. Because there, when, once, when my child was three, I went a lot on bike rides with him, right? At places that he didn't even talk. And maybe almost three years ago, three years later, I went with him when he could talk. So when I arrived at that place, my son was like, Hey, Papa, do you remember this? And remember this? I was like, you didn't even talk back then. It was like I was making a cushion wet that wasn't getting wet, but it was still receiving water. And suddenly it exploded. But a lot of people don't even invest in something because they want to see the result. For me, it was a hard pill to swallow. And now, I don't want something to happen immediately. For me, I just enjoy the journey. Because the journey is a lot... The journey is amazing. Just look it up. It would surprise you how many people are not happy at the end of the journey. Be grateful every day each moment each day each second that passes won't return while some days may be hard or even months and years life only happens once be grateful for the little things and the big things and everything in between life isn't always beautiful otherwise we wouldn't know what separates the bad days from the good days focus and be grateful for those good days and days that make life worth living. Uh, yeah, and you'll yeah. realize that your life story isn't all that bad after all. I mean, I have to admit that is true. Life is not always beautiful. And you just have to take it as it is. Whatever happens. I mean, I'm a one-eyed living alone in a weird country that doesn't speak my, per per my perfect language. I mean... <sighs> I have a wife, my wife doesn't have many family, I got two kids, I do everything by my own. Um, I just had to survive, I speak Dutch, Spanish, and my native language, Papiamento. You, you never know, all my friends I thought were gonna always stay together, but now everybody has a family, I only see them once in a while. It just comes to a point that I just have to appreciate everything the way it goes. It is as if certain friends are a tree. Certain friends are a branch and certain are a leaf. I appreciate if you're here, but if you want to flow, I'm not going to chase you to stay. Or a branch that falls, I'm not going to chase you to stay. I have only two friends that are like a big tree. And some of them just keeps floating back and forth. And I know a lot of people that are really hurt. They're like, my old friendship, they're not the same. And I'm like, well, actually, I don't really care. But I do appreciate if you come by, but you don't have to stay. Nobody is going to stay. People change. Nobody is the same in 10, 5, 20 years. We change. Many of us have to go out, enjoy life, 
to realize that these materialistic things, they're not going to make us happy. And then you return to your original self. And until you don't experience that, I don't think you fully develop as a person. You know, your brain develops till you're 25, but yourself, yourself, um, I think it's actually after your 40s or something like that, you know, because old people usually are more at peace and that's why they're so secluded and they enjoy simple stuff. I'm at that moment right now that um, I'm so at peace with so little. I got the money, but I really don't care about the money. I just care about the possibility that I just never look at my bank account because I know I'm always getting more money that I'm throwing away. That makes me happy. Maybe I don't earn a lot, but hey, I know I'm making more money because I don't buy anything. I just buy games on Steam for a very low price. Kiss my wife happy. Good night. Mwah, love you and my kids. Anyway, it, this was a weird video. I didn't expect it would do something weird like this. But hey, if you enjoyed it, hey man, let me know what you think, okay? Peace.